We've always assumed a galaxy like the Milky Way, with its hundred billion ancient stars, takes countless billions of years to slowly assemble. Yet the Webb Telescope has just revealed six galaxies that appeared a mere 500 million years after the Big Bang, and they're up to 10 times larger than the Milky Way. That shouldn't be possible. Galaxies that young simply shouldn't be that massive. So now, with growing unease and excitement, scientists are realizing that our long-standing narrative of cosmic creation may need a dramatic rewrite. More than two years after Webb soared into space, astronomers are basking in a flood of discoveries as the telescope stretches our vision deeper than ever before. But with every breakthrough, it dumps another puzzle into the laps of cosmologists, almost like opening a cosmic Pandora's box. Most recently, Webb once again peered back into the universe's first 500 million years. What it found left researchers stunned galaxies that should have still been toddlers were already enormous, heavy with stars, and far more developed than anyone expected. Among them is a galaxy that may be one of the oldest ever witnessed. What's jaw-dropping is that this ancient structure already contains billions of stars. Even stranger, just two years earlier the Hubble Space Telescope had noticed it only as an odd, faint spot of light. No one imagined that this tiny blip was actually a cosmic titan hiding at the edge of time, until Webb took a closer look. Webb's powerful vision revealed that the mysterious point was a primordial galaxy, fully formed far too early. Scientists named it GZ9P3, located at a redshift of 9.3, meaning we are witnessing it as it existed just 510 million years after the Big Bang. Although we've spotted galaxies from even earlier epochs, none of them come close to GZ9P3's astonishing mass. All signs suggest that its stars must have ignited and multiplied at a breathtaking pace, far faster than our current models ever predicted. Yet the surprises don't end there. GZ9P3's structure seems to carry hints of secrets from the universe's youth. Researchers noticed that the galaxy contains two bright, compact regions, two dense cores glowing side by side. This strongly suggests a cosmic collision, two young galaxies crashing together while the universe was still in its infancy. Even more captivating, astronomers managed to zoom in on its stellar population and discovered that its light is dominated by brilliant, youthful stars blazing against the darkness of early time. The research team used Webb's instruments to hunt for specific elements, silicon, carbon, iron, hidden inside GZ9P3's oldest stars. Iron, being the heaviest element a star can naturally forge, only appears after stellar explosions scatter it across space. When those early giants died, they seeded the young cosmos with these metals, providing the raw material for future generations of stars. To their surprise, the team discovered that GZ9P3 contains far more ancient stars than anyone anticipated. This hints that early galaxies matured chemically at a staggering pace, enriching the universe with metals much faster than our theories allow. The presence of such unexpectedly aged stars at such an early epoch suggests that star formation must have begun far earlier than our current models ever dared to propose. If that's true, then our understanding of how galaxies grow, both in size and chemical richness, may need a serious overhaul. These observations also point to a universe where galactic collisions may have been happening constantly right after the Big Bang. Our cosmological model might not be wrong, but it may be too slow, too gentle, to explain these massive, well-developed galaxies appearing almost instantly on the cosmic timeline. And the unsettling part is that this isn't our first signal that something in the universe's grand equation refuses to line up. You've probably heard whispers about the cosmology crisis. It began when different techniques for measuring the universe's age started producing conflicting answers, a problem that still hasn't been resolved. No one knows why. 
Webb's discoveries, instead of smoothing things out, have only deepened the confusion. The universe is stretching outward, and distant galaxies drift farther from us every second. If we calculate this expansion rate using the cosmic microwave background, the fossil light from when the universe was just 380,000 years old, we get one value. But there's another method. We measure the brightness of distant supernovas whose true luminosity is known. By comparing how bright they should be to how faint they appear, we can estimate how fast the universe was expanding when they exploded. That gives us a second value. The expansion rate is called the Hubble constant. The maddening mismatch between these two measurements is known as the Hubble tension. And that tension, ladies and gentlemen, is the heart of the cosmology crisis. But now, thanks to Webb, it's no longer the only crisis. A new challenge has emerged, one that shakes the foundations of our long-trusted models in ways we've never experienced before. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that, because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. This is how we inch closer to truth. When you look up on a clear night, far from city lights, you see a sky overflowing with stars. And amid that glittering sea, you can even spot the faint blur of the Andromeda galaxy. That glowing smear of Andromeda is just one reminder of how crowded the universe truly is. Space is overflowing with stars and galaxies, but the real question is, how much of the universe do they actually occupy? In other words, how much matter exists out there, and how is it spread around? It sounds like a straightforward inquiry, yet the answer has become one of cosmology's most frustrating riddles. The problem stems from the fact that different observations simply do not agree on how matter is arranged in today's cosmos. This conflict has birthed a new cosmic puzzle known as the S8 tension, a fresh wave of confusion layered on top of the Hubble tension. S8 is essentially a measure of how clumpy matter is across the universe. Imagine the cosmos as an enormous jigsaw puzzle, with matter scattered in pieces across the board. Scientists are trying to understand how those pieces cluster together, forming everything from tiny dwarf galaxies to immense galaxy clusters. There are two main ways to measure this cosmic clumpiness. One method uses low redshift observations, including the subtle effects of weak gravitational lensing. Massive structures, black holes, galaxies, clusters, bend and twist the light from more distant objects, like invisible hands tugging at beams of starlight. By studying this distortion, astronomers can map where matter is hiding, even when it's too faint to see directly. The second method relies on the standard cosmological model, built on measurements of the cosmic microwave background. And here lies the crisis. The S8 value predicted by this model refuses to match the S8 value measured through weak lensing. Two approaches, two answers, one universe, and no clear explanation. So where does that leave us? With a giant cosmic question mark. Despite decades of theories, intricate equations, and even hypothetical constructs we invoke to make the math behave, something fundamental still isn't lining up. To confront this mystery head-on, scientists turned to one of the most powerful supercomputers on Earth and launched a simulation on a truly staggering scale. The simulation consumed more than 50 million computing hours, spread across 30,000 processors in the DRAC Cosma 8 supercomputer at Durham University. The project, dubbed Flamingo, carries a long, technical name that essentially means a full-sky, high-resolution attempt to simulate the universe in unprecedented detail. But Flamingo isn't just big, it's ambitious. It goes far beyond previous simulations by incorporating more than just gravity. For decades, many simulations focused mainly on dark matter, since it makes up most of the universe's mass. Regular matter, baryonic matter, the stuff that makes stars, planets, and us, was often treated as an afterthought. But baryons, despite being only about one-fifth of the total mass, can dramatically reshape the universe on small scales. 
Winds launched by supermassive black holes, explosive supernovas, and the chaotic feedback inside galaxies can all reshape matter distribution in ways we can no longer ignore. Flamingo takes all of this into account. It follows both dark matter and ordinary matter together, acknowledging that even though dark matter rules gravity, baryons leave fingerprints all over cosmic structure. And while the simulation made incredible progress, successfully replicating galaxies like the Milky Way and Andromeda with impressive accuracy, it still couldn't explain why matter today seems to be less clumpy than expected. The central puzzle, the S8 tension, remained unsolved. In fact, one could argue the results make the problem even worse. Flamingo suggests that something may be seriously off-kilter in our beloved standard model of cosmology. Even more unsettling, its findings clash with what Webb and other observatories are seeing about how matter is distributed on cosmic scales. Our current theory paints a beautiful picture of galaxy evolution, but beneath the elegance lies a brewing contradiction. The standard model predicts that galaxies should be about 7% more tightly clustered than what we actually observe. Even the new, highly detailed simulations, which factor in the violent influence of supermassive black holes, aren't much closer to reality. They still overestimate the clumpiness by around 5%. In other words, the math stubbornly refuses to match the universe we live in. And just when we hoped Webb might ease the tension, it only amplified it. Webb has now confirmed that the original Hubble measurements were not flukes or errors. In fact, Webb's precision only strengthens Hubble's original calculation of the universe's expansion rate, pushing the Hubble tension from a nagging issue to an undeniable crisis. Put simply, the expansion rate of the universe, the famous Hubble constant, continues to disagree depending on how we measure it. No systematic mistake has been found, no hidden miscalculation, just two answers that refuse to converge. And that leaves us face to face with a thrilling and slightly terrifying possibility. Our fundamental understanding of the cosmos may be incomplete. Some scientists are beginning to wonder whether entirely new physics is required to make sense of the conflict. Others are boldly proposing that dark matter, the invisible backbone of our cosmic structure, might need to be reimagined or even replaced. It's wild, it's exhilarating, and it shows just how alive the field of cosmology is. So, what do you make of all this? I'd love to hear your thoughts, share them with me. And if you enjoy diving into the mysteries of the universe, make sure you stay connected with us.